Hello guys, um, I want to make a video talking about Luke 5 verses 1 through 11 and I'm finally back, I have so much more time now to make videos and share with you. So, yeah, as we previously said, I'm going to talk about Luke. Um, in this chapter, Jesus is talking about, it's the Fishes of Men Bible passage that is very popular that lots of Christians know. But today I want to present to you just one word in that um, paragraph of truth and um, just to present to you just how God uses his people, God, how God utilizes people and concerning our tools and our character. I'm going to explain everything. And I just pray that you're blessed to um, you're blessed with during this video um, that you learn something gr uh, great, something new that you can apply to your life. Okay, so I'm gonna read the Bible verse and post a link down, and you can read it. And so let's start. Luke 5, 1 through 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he, heard, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night and haven't caught anything. But, also, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a great number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled with both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter heard this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had, and so were James and John and the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishers of men, or fishers for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Okay, so these are my notes. Okay. But I'm going to present to you just one word. But like, I want to talk about everything else before I get to that part. So basically, Jesus was teaching others, well, was about to preach from the you know, the shore uh, from the boat, um, there are lots of crowds gathering around, and Jesus, what I find very um, powerful, very particular, is that Jesus got into Simon's boat, and I feel like everything that Jesus does is for a particular reason, mm -hmm. and I think that Jesus saw something um, very, very, Jesus saw something in Peter, and you know, later on, Peter was established the rock um, that Christ will build his church on. And um, so, this Bible verse is all about basically faith and um, believing in what you cannot see, the trusting in what God tells you is eventually for your good, even if it doesn't look right, it looks absurd, even if you've worked all night. So, I'm gonna go like basically through verse by verse and present you anything that I underlined in here and we'll go from there. Okay, so I talk about the one belonging to Simon. Um, in verse, oh there's no verses, but in the part where Jesus said, uh, put out into deep water and let down the nest for a catch. Uh, for Christians who are in like evangelism or doing any kinds of work for the Lord that um, you know, we've been gifted toward um sometimes we tend to stay in our comfort zone and when i every time i read deep water i always feel pu pushing away from the shore um, going to places that are not in a place of comfortability we're always the kinds of people who like to be in a comfort zone and feel protected but when it comes to jesus sometimes you just have to be brave and you know I mean, these are fishermen. This is their job. They're probably experts, probably pros at it. But um, they've been working all night. Like they started they, during this time that Jesus was telling them to go back out. They had just finished cleaning their nets. They just finished. I mean, cleaning their nets, 
and oh, sorry, I just repeated that. I'm so tired. Okay, and Jesus said, "Go back in there." It's it's basically like, oh, you say you did a chore, and you didn't do it well, and your your mama is like, "Go back and do it again." This is how I feel like Jesus is telling the disciples, "Go back, go back into the water, into the deep, not even just like the shore or something." And this is like, it's not even night. Um, it's a night. I don't think it's night. It's like the morning. And usually fish at night, and the fishermen actually have a specific places that they catch the fish. And where they're going at this time of the day, there's nothing to catch. Like literally, the disciples are right. You can't really blame them for being right, but they actually right. There's nothing really you could catch at this time of the day. But Jesus, I wanted to prove something to them that I am the Lord of Lords. I am the King of Kings. I made these fishes that you are trying to catch for the past whatever how long you've been trying to um so they go into deep and simon calls uh jesus master in the beginning and master that i meant rabbi or teacher and he says we worked all night sometimes christians they say we're trying to like help someone learn who god is or bring someone into the faith We've been working all night. We've been working for years, praying for them for years. We've been toiling, we've been breaking our backs, but nothing seems to be happening. And the next sentence, Simon says, but because you say so. Sometimes we need to have that kind of humility. We have to always remember, remember that Christ is, there's a hierarchy here, and Christ is above us. So that but in there signals that there is a, a leader in front of us that we are not the ultimate leader and it also inclines uh, to the concept of obedience which is a very important part um, of Christianity of how establishing a relationship with God the Bible the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice so be obey the Holy Spirit oh my goodness your relationship with God is just gonna be like whoo grow okay um, and then I circled when when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish. I don't think they were expecting to catch anything. Uh, I don't think they knew Jesus that well, too. And I mean, they know that he's probably done like a miracle or two, but like, they're still in their doubting state. But they caught so much fish that I don't know what, they, I, they probably would have fainted, but I don't think. Okay. That they caught so much fish that their nets began to break. I don't know about you, but like, that's amazing. And... So this is the part where I'm going to start talking about the tools that we use and all that. And they had to uh, signal other boats to come. What I see here is an amplification of faith. Um, when God does something for you, when you obey him, that blessing can spread out to other people, right? And other people can also enjoy that blessing as long as, you know, they are of this one mind, one vision. So when you're trying to establish a leadership, um, establish leadership, always have people with one mind, one vision. Having people in a support team with different visions is going to lead to just a crumbling of everything. There's this quote um, that says, a leader without people behind them is taking a walk. Jesus was a leader. He could have done everything on his own, but as he was leading, um, and doing his work on earth he did have a support system and it's very essential that you have that all right so the nets began to break and the boat began to sink that yeah i would like this is the part where i would have probably fainted because like i know how to swim but only with goggles and i'll be like oh my god lord jesus save me um so after um Simon had called first Simon called Jesus master now Simon is calling Jesus Lord you see the change master to Lord Jesus had gained a much closer had become I guess more important not like he wasn't important but I don't know what to say but he's been there's been a change in Peter's heart and the way he sees Christ he's no longer a teacher not someone that just teaches you but like he's Lord, someone you look up to, someone you surrender your life to, someone who has a throne that controls everything about your life. And Peter is starting to see that just through this simple little act of faith by going into the deep. 
and Jesus, uh, the, all these people, all the fishermen were astonished about everything. And Jesus said to Peter, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishers of men. Um, the don't be afraid is like said like at least 300 times in the Bible. You could read a Bible verse a day, every day of the year, and about not being afraid of anything. Um, to me, the don't be afraid part means that, you know, you may be working for the Lord, but nothing happens where you feel like the enemy is, like, stifling everything that you're working so hard for. Don't be afraid. You'll be vicious of men because God said so. Okay. They left everything and followed him. Leaving everything, that is the most craziest thing I think someone could have done at that time. Especially for fishermen, that is their job. You, to leave everything to follow Christ, you're not getting paid for that. And um, to relate that to life, to apply that to life. When you follow Jesus, you can't carry baggage with you. Because Jesus walks everywhere. Um, the baggage I'm talking about is your past sins your regrets, your guilt, your fear, everything that Jesus washed away with his blood, you can't carry that with you when you're following Jesus. It's going to slow you down because Jesus, I'm telling you, Jesus walks everywhere. Uh, spiritually and physically, Jesus walked everywhere. You can't be carrying stuff with you. So, if you're really looking for people who you can look up to, for um, who show great examples of faith, this is a great Bible verse to read, and I recommend that you read it. So I'm going to talk about the part I really wanted to talk about, the washing, about the nets. Okay, so I see the nets in this Bible verse as tools that we use, tools that Christians use to minister to others. Um, but Jesus broke the, the nets by sending the people into the deep. When God calls you into the deep, he's going to break something. It's gonna break something. Um, where do I go from here? Okay, so I'm gonna show you a diagram. I wish I drew it, but this is basically what a leader is. Hold on a second. Oh, I I did draw it. No, I didn't draw it. Please hold. A leader. Uh huh. Still okay. So this is a leader. Uh, sorry, you can't see that. This is a, like an iceberg. Okay. So here is your skill, and here is your character. Your skill pertains to 10% of who you are as a leader, or as someone who works for God, and 90% is your character. When God calls you to do something for him, he will break your character. He will break your tools because he's trying to prove to you that he is Lord of Lords. Sometimes you might end up calling Christ something lower than he is. But when you obey him, you will finally see him in a whole new light and you will call him Lord of Lords. Um, so the way that Jesus broke Peter's character that Peter fell onto his knees and said, Forgive me, Lord, I am a sinful man. Peter's character was broken. Broken. That whatever um, arrogant character or the, the typical Peter that we know, that character was broken at that moment in time when the boat was sinking and Peter saw that he's standing before a majestic God. A God who hung heavens like a curtain. A God who came into a virgin woman and was birthed and came and grew and lived among us was hated among us eventually and was killed by us to die to save us that is i don't see anything that's greater than that when it comes to love that is true love um so that's how peter's character was broken but when jesus breaks your character he's not just going to leave you there he's going to give you assuring words he's going to soothe your soul he's going to give you new tools that will enable you to reach people to do his work basically to become fishers of men and by becoming fishers of men that means living your life for christ 
and using the gifts that he's given you to do so but you have to be willing down to lay down your life you have to be willing to leave everything and follow him see see the connections here um but also you just have to understand that everything will work out for you and that you do not have to be afraid and even if you are using these tools for the first time these disciples left everything everything that they are so profess professionals are using these things but they're leaving them to follow a man they've just met a man who is seen as the lord of lords so as the messiah that is coming to save um mankind or redeem the jewish people um yeah that's basically what i wanted to share about this bible verse so basically don't be afraid to go deep into the waters into the shores because that's where the blessing is that's where your faith can be proved um going into deep also signals danger but jesus didn't send them into the deep he went with them so just know and be assured that wherever you do whatever work that you do for god just know that he is in the boat with you jesus is literally in the same boat he, he walks with you he will never leave you nor will he forsake you he is great he is loving he is caring he's holy he's mighty he's good he's love he's father he is almighty and he's just worthy of our praise and just always and everything that you do just look up to god and work for the kingdom of god and everything else will be added onto you and what was added onto these disciples eternal life and now they're seated in heaven with christ waiting for us to join them just pray that you are blessed by this passage i'll see you guys later bye